My name is Michelle Gibson. I work with the Remax First suite of families, and today we're gonna dive into luxury. How does that make you guys feel? <laughs> it makes you feel luxurious? Who said that? Yeah. So, actually, is this on? On? Um, we're just gonna get this up for you. So, most people don't feel great about luxury. Anybody in the room sell luxury properties? Consistently, as if this is your, the majority of the business from, for your real estate career. Like, no. Okay, how many has sold a property over 800,000? I'd like to know the audience. How about 900,000? One million? One five? Two? Three? Okay, it's nice to know the audience. And then I just want a raise of hands of who here is not with Remax. Okay, welcome and thank you for coming. We won't tell anybody. Um, we're really excited uh, to have you and to share all of our little hacks with you. Ready? Here we go. Maybe we don't go. Okay. What do you guys think about luxury agents? When you think about luxury, what comes to mind? They have a what? Horns on their head. Okay, they have horns on their head. All right. <laughs> what else? A, li a little arrogant. Snotty. What else? They're not as relatable. They don't like to engage. What else? What kind of cars do they drive? Oh, they oh luxurious. Yeah. And what do they have in the bank? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, what else is the myth? What's the myth of the client? That they're snobs. Go ahead. That they're extremely particular. What else do you guys think? Yeah. Is that how everyone feels? Well, after we leave today, I hope that no one in the room feels like this. There is nothing different between a residential home agent like yourselves who do under a million and the luxury agents. It's just their business plan and their mindset. And we're gonna focus on a lot of that today. And my goal is that when you leave, we've broken down some boundaries for you and barriers so that you realize they're just people like we are. Is that fair? Okay. What's the state of luxury real estate today? Well, first, I think we have to know what is luxury real estate. And everyone has a different opinion of what that is. So today, I'd like to come to terms and agree on what it is. Is that fair? Luxury real estate is typically defined as the top 10% in a market. What's the challenge in a metropolitan area outside of Manhattan? Every zip code is different, right? Every price point has a different definition of luxury. There are areas where the least expensive home is a million dollars and might not be considered luxury, and other areas where a million dollar home is the most expensive home in the neighborhood. Yes? Okay. So luxury isn't equal. I want to talk about some trends pre-COVID and post-COVID so you guys understand. Pre-COVID, we were seeing everyone move to smaller homes and downsizing and eliminating their footprint. Post-COVID, we're seeing everyone wants what? Backyard. Space. And what do we know about space? It costs money. Absolutely. So that's some of the trends. They're now looking for locations off the grid where they can have privacy and events and exclusivity. Very similar to years and years ago, what we grew up thinking about luxury as. Amenities. I mean, who doesn't love a great kitchen? Yeah. Right? So that's a huge one. And there are new trends coming out in the luxury market, like farm to table. So 
When you're speaking to these clients, we're going to want to know that this is where luxury is headed. At any time, you guys can ask me a question. We can go interactive. Um, and what we know about this group of clients is that they're extremely passionate and that they're focused on their lifestyle. Right? OK. When you say farm to table, so mm -hmm. is, that, is that a commentary on the amount of property they're looking for? Or yes, okay. space. And amenities. OK. So why are we in the room? Why is everybody here today? Why, sh why are we even interested in luxury? We want to get into it. Why do we want to get into it? Money. Who said money? More commission. What else? Experience. Status. You want to drive? She wants to drive fancy cars. What? Better Instagram posts. Okay. True. True. Do you think they look like that in real life? No. They don't. They don't. Okay, so here's what I, I want you guys to just maybe focus on for the next couple of seconds. When you look at your business as a whole, it's really important that you dissect it into categories. Where does my business come from and what portion comes from where? The greatest rule of thumb for a really healthy, robust business is that 25% comes from luxury, 50% comes from the middle of the market, and 25% comes from entry level. Now this class is gonna be great for people who work in areas where the entry level is, or the barrier to entry is a million dollars. So great for you guys. <laughs> um, and your price points would be increased. The reason why we do this is because at 25% entry into home ownership, right, we're feeding our business as we grow it and as time goes on, right, with the next stage which is an upgrade, and then potentially the next stage, which is an upgrade. So anytime you do anything, you don't want to be focused on one single area unless you're looking to be a niche agent. And we're going to cover that for you luxury guys out there right now that want to focus on that. Um, and it, there is a sustainable business model for it. What you need to know is that luxury is usually the first hit in a market when it adjusts. Okay. How do I break into luxury? Doesn't everybody want to know? Raise your hand. I want to know. I want to know. Okay. You're going to love this. We got to focus on your mindset. So let's talk about it. How do you guys feel about cash? King. Cash is king. How does it make you feel when you have to talk about money with people? Anybody uncomfortable? We were raised to be uncomfortable. What do they tell us about money? You don't talk about money. What else don't you talk about? Other people's money. What else? Religion and politics, yeah. Well, you didn't grow up in my household because we talked about that. Um, what, what else about money? Money is the root of all. Yeah. What do you guys think about people who have money? Are they greedy? No, they work hard to make the money. They work hard. What's the other stigmas out there? Are you comfortable talking about your own finances? Are you comfortable talking about your own investment portfolios? Do you have investment portfolios? Do you want to learn how to build investment portfolios? Yeah. Right. So for so long, money has been associated not with hard work, unfortunately, but thank you for saying that, um, but with greed and evil and all of these things. Right? And I think that part of that creates the psychology that why we can't um, break into this for ourselves. Why we think that going to some class is different, where you're going to learn something different here today than you will learn about selling residential real estate that you sell every single day at the highest level. And I want you to realize that money is good for the good it does. Right? And you're allowed to talk about money. As a matter of fact, you have to talk about money, right? It's part of our business. What do we do? We manage someone's assets. So why do you think it makes us so uncomfortable, besides what our parents told us? Go ahead, Kareem. Well, it's also myths, right? Um, a lot of people have the myth that money is poor, and there's children that parents raise their children that live in that neighborhood. Money is poor, and they're going to 
views. Um, and I think psychologically, that has a lot to do with me. It's like for myself, um, when I got into that industry of mm -hmm. my homes, um, being like being pro mother from a man that mindset, it's a way that I had to educate myself, train myself, read books. Um, anybody out there, if you guys want to read and listen to a little bit more familiar with mindset, uh, that's a phenomenal book that talks about making the roots from the trees that the parents gave us as children so that we could plant our own trees and be in the mindset of knowing that we live an abundant life, no one is better than us, and rich people will draw themselves to us regardless of whether rich or not. It's true. Um, I was sitting with Carl, and I think he's in the back. Can you give us a wave? Um, the other day, and I was raised in a household um, where money was tight. We lived in a great area, but we didn't have terrific amenities. We, I think we took two vacations in my entire life. I went to rec summer camp if I went to camp, um, where all of the kids I grew up with went to sleepaway camp, where everything was name brand. And um, I was lucky if we got um, shoes at Kmart, to be honest, um, which was still around back then. And it didn't have the little blue tag in the back. Right? So money has always been something in my life that has been an issue. And I think that that's the way that it is for so many of us. The idea is that we break that generational gap for you guys today. Um, Carl was raised learning about investments. I spent my 20s paying $1,700 a month for a three-bedroom rental um, between the ages of like 19 and 26. Uh, and I probably could have bought a beautiful mansion about a mile down the road if I had known about investment and the cost of renting and the expense. So I want you guys to wipe clean whatever you think about money. And I'm going to give you some hacks today to make you feel more comfortable. And I want you guys to practice something when you leave, besides looking at your bank account every day, because you should do that anyway. You should look at at your money. You should watch it and focus on it because when you do, you see where it goes and then you can begin to tell it what to do. Um, so that's for you guys. There are so many clients out there that live in million dollar homes that go paycheck to paycheck, that are backlogged in debt, and they're just like us. They're people. They're families. They lose money. They win money. They get divorced. They have drug addiction, right? Yeah, they're, they're just people. They're just like you and I. As a matter of fact, some of the wealthiest people I know wear flip-flops and shorts all day long. Right? But we have this concept in our head that there's a barrier for us. And it's our job to remove that. Okay. This is the second. This is the big one. You need to talk to rich people. Yeah. I want to thank you guys for coming today. <laughs> That's the tip. For those of you who drove an hour, I really appreciate it. No. Um, <clears throat> talk to rich people. Does it sound easy? Well, I don't know. Where do I find rich people? If we don't talk about money, and we're not co comfortable talking about investments, right? Short Hill. This guy's going to go to the Short Hill Mall. We're going to talk about where you find and engage with high net worth individuals. Right? Does everybody know what net worth is? Does anybody want to throw it out for me? What's net worth? Yeah, assets minus your liabilities. Okay. We're going to level up our language today. All right, here we go. How do I converse with them? They're, they're, I'm going to give you resources. Now, I'm not going to give you the encyclopedia or the dictionary and tell you you have to know everything. These are places where you can find talking points so you can have high-level conversations with rich people, rich people. Okay. The Rob Report, has anyone ever heard of it? Do you subscribe to it? I, I buy it whenever I see it. What is it? It's a magazine for rich people talking about what am I spending, what am I doing, all the whole it does. It's phenomenal. It's $58 a month. You can subscribe to it online. It gets in front of you, in front of your eyes, what all the wealthy people have in front of their eyes. Why does that matter? You know the language. 
What else? Yeah, you're visualizing it. What else? Right. Right. You become familiar with what they're familiar with. Right. I am going to share just a little story. I went to an event. I felt gorgeous. It was, it was a networking event. I was so excited. I got this really expensive velvet blazer. It was like a jacket. It was gorgeous. And it had like a satin lapel. And it cost, for me, a lot of money. Um, I remember walking into the event, and it was in a very bougie area, and someone said to me, oh, is that Ralph Lauren collection? <laughs> and, and I said, no, it's J. Crow. And they said, I know. Oh. <laughs> right? Oh, right? I didn't know to say yes, because that person didn't know. They don't know. They can guess. They can tell. So many of us don't present ourselves luxuriously. So I have a hack for you. For anybody that's interested, who has Pinterest in the room? OK, guys, girls, you can go into Pinterest, and you can put in there, how does a luxurious woman dress? <laughs> how does a luxurious man dress? <coughs> And then you can click on those little ads, and they will give you budget-friendly pieces of apparel, right, knockoffs, that make you feel great and make you feel put together for pennies on the dollar. So when you look at the Rob Report, we know we're not buying a $2,800 coat today, right? So these are the things that we want to start thinking about. How do they present themselves? OK, Realm. Realm is a real estate tool. Um, it is not a Remax tool. It basically connects um, luxury home sellers with content and agents across the country. You're going to want to take a look at that. Bloomberg. Why Bloomberg, guys? What, what do people who own luxury properties have? Stocks, investments, money. Notice I have the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg and not Fox News and CNN. <coughs> Why is that? Because we don't talk about religion and politics, guys, right? But we got to get really comfortable talking about money. All right. Crystal. Has anyone heard of this? It's not a drink. It's a website. <laughs> All right. It's a website that dissects um, the personality styles of high net worth individuals. It actually connects to LinkedIn. People say all the time, where do I find rich people? We're going to talk about it. These are the tools that you're going to need. Um, another great uh, program for you guys, where you, if you're buying lists, um, is affluencesearch.org. We'll literally give you lists of people in C-suite, in director level, high net worth. And the next one is um, HNW. Um, you guys are all going to get these slides, so you don't have to worry about writing it down. But um, HNW is like family-owned, generationally wealthy individuals. Okay. All right, here we go. When you're getting ready to talk to people, what should you do? <laughs> Educate yourself. So first you want to look good and, and understand what they want to converse about, and then you want to... Be qualified, right? OK, so we have some designations. All right, what do you need? They say you need a presence. What does that mean? What does a presence mean? You want to be noticed. You don't want to blend into the background. Look at Chiquita. She sells million dollar houses. No one can miss her, right? She's all about the blank. You want to set yourself apart from ordinary. Because they believe that they are, and that's who you have to network with, right? 
You need a value proposition. We're going to build it today. It's going to be OK. And you need to build out a really strong um, client experience. So when you think luxury, what brands do you think about? Chanel, Tiffany, OK, Black Label. What else? Does someone say like Black Label like they mean the alcohol Black Label? <laughs> Is that what you guys mean? Well, we're definitely real estate agents. No. Um, what do you think about? What companies come to mind? The Ritz-Carlton? W Hotel? Four Seasons. What else? Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom, right? Why do you think those organizations can sell jeans for more money than the same brand on another website or in another store? The client experience. They tell a story about somebody returning a tire to Nordstrom and them taking it back, right? So what do your clients experience when they work with you? What's special? Right? How often are we communicating that with them? How clear are we communicating with them? What are we talking to them about? This room is really quiet. Are you guys okay? Yeah. It's intense. Money is intense. Let's talk about luxury lead strategies. What's the number one and best way to break into a luxury market traditionally? Broker opens. Anybody else? Yes? Word of mouth. What's your name? Claudia. What is Claudia? Thank you, Claudia. She's right. The number one way that people traditionally break into markets is to identify one, one high area of value, a neighborhood, not a zip code, right? One market where you can every door direct them, which costs money, which is a barrier to getting into luxury, right? So nod your heads. Um, and we're gonna, they're gonna con be contacted eight times over eight weeks, and then you're gonna put them on a bi-monthly, depending on the market, or annual, like, or monthly for the year, um, and you're gonna market them direct. You're gonna put yourself in that neighborhood. So thank you, Claudia. You're going to, when properties come up, you're gonna go call and see the properties. You're gonna familiarize yourself with it. You're gonna go to events in that neighborhood. You're going to hang out at the park in that neighborhood. You're going to go to the mall in that neighborhood. Potentially, I know some people are going to not like this, you're going to go to the religious organizations in that neighborhood. You're going to go to networking events and charity events there. That's how you're going to get into conversation with these people. Get in the room with rich people. Oh, we have a guest. Hi, it's Olivia's wife. <laughs> She's standing in the back trying to hide. Um, so, so that is traditionally the, the best way to do it, is breaking in through every door direct. Um, some other ways. Let's talk about it. Let's say I don't want to mail, or I have a limited budget. The second best way, and this isn't in the slides because I wanted everyone to pay attention, <laughs> is to work on the expires in those neighborhoods. I know, guys, you're going to have to talk, you got to talk to people who are rich, right? Do you think most really wealthy people get cold calls? He said, yes, ma'am. What do you think? Do you think most, mo yeah? They, they mostly get cold calls? How do you think most self-made people made their money? Did they have to reach out and talk to other people? Yeah. So I think it's like, and to put it in perspective for you guys, when you're building a brokerage as opposed to real estate business, nobody ever calls the agent that does number one because why don't they call that person? Because they think they're too busy. They think everyone's calling them. They're intimidated. And to you know the truth, they get the least amount of phone calls, right? They're usually the most polite because they focus on customer service, and that's why they do such a high level of business. And it's the same way with these clients. We have an agent. He's not here today, um, and I won't 
you know, call him out by name, but he's been cold calling in Princeton as opposed to Trenton. And he came back to me after a couple of weeks and said, Michelle, I can't believe how nice these people are, how friendly they are, how they really want to know what their home is worth today. And they appreciate the resource. So cold calling works in those areas. How else can we get in front of high net worth individuals and rich, rich people? What else do we do? Charity events. What else? Yeah, Green. So I just wanted to add, we're in a, we're in a business and it's a relationship, right? We don't sell homes, we sell them to Our job is to provide service, educate our clients, and get them into the flow as we're in a relationship business. Um, I get it, salesmen today attack you many different things that we have. However, agents have to understand, and, and I'm speaking for myself because it took me a while to do this as well. It's not about being at the right place at the right time. You have to be the right person. You have to have the right mindset, right? Um, if you're shy and timid or they're going to be minimalist, they're going to eat you up alive. They're like normal. Um, you have to be outgoing. You have to be energetic. You have to want, you have to get them to want to do business with you instead of being like forcing business to them, right? And how do you do that? Again, relationship building. Right? When you go to a restaurant, you go to a fancy restaurant, and I tell this to people all the time that ask me, go to a fancy restaurant, spend $300 once a month or something, take your girl or your husband or your whoever, go out and start socializing with these people, being in an environment with them if it's once a month, once every six months, once a year. But you're not going to get that, you're not going to get that, that, that type of crowd at home or working in New York now if you're trying to branch off. 100%. Thank you for sharing that. You have to put yourself um, in the environment where you can have these conversations. A huge, go ahead. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, when, and this is something I just learned recently. Um, make sure you bring value when you are having these conversations because you can put some, like go in front of someone and say, hey, I'm so and so, but then it's okay and. 100%. So, like what you were saying, like the knowledge, but the word value to me, like really stuck out when I heard this a few weeks ago. Okay. Um, because it really gives them the why as to why they should even continue the conversation. I agree. Um, and that's why we're going to read and we're going to put together programs for you guys and give you guys tools today so that you are confident and you have the data and information that you need to properly market properties like this and get in front of those clients. Um, a huge source for luxury business is referral. Okay. So if we don't know rich people and we can't get into the room with them, or we haven't yet, what is a great source of referral that you guys don't commonly think about? Well, who's in the room with those high net worth individuals? <coughs> luxury agents, right? So the referral network between other luxury agents in your market and outside your market is so important to you guys. We were able to break into luxury markets down on the shore, second, second homes, um, average price point probably 2.5, uh, by sending gifts to luxury agents in North Jersey asking for their second home referrals and treating them like your database. And they have luxury symposiums from across the country. We have a huge, vast uh, referral network in Remax for luxury agents. If you guys aren't taking advantage of those tools, please do, right? Ask somebody if you can work with them or see what they do. You'd be surprised how often they got their break from someone and they're willing to help you guys and do that. Now, I'm not saying all of them, right? But they can't possibly travel the entire state. And what do we know about luxury? We know it's a niche. It's usually in a niche market, right? So if you're not in that market, they're probably looking for someone that can service their clients and close the deal. Isn't that what you're looking for? When you send a referral? Okay, so those are some strategies. I want to talk about social media. If you guys are really big on Instagram and social media, you, there are actually, and Carl's going to make fun of me, so here we go. Michelle's so good at Instagram. Don't anyone look at my Instagram. I don't think I've ever posted. But you can target ads to people based on their income and, and based on their employment, which takes me back to LinkedIn. So are you guys all on LinkedIn, and do you have a profile? Okay, cool. And 
Does your profile say that you do luxury? No. Why do people go to LinkedIn? It, right, so it's a business connector between professionals. Your resume is on there. Your work history is on there. It validates you in the market. It's a social platform to you guys to, for people to connect. Right, so the majority of high net worth individuals that we would be targeting have some type of profile on that. Now, anyone who's ever been employed at that level, or even when you went to school, we talk about your assessments when you have to go apply for a job. Has anyone ever had to take like an assessment, a personality assessment? I did. It's horrible. It's horrible. The worst thing I've experienced. Yeah. <laughs> Way to scare everybody. <laughs> Don't be afraid of luxury, be afraid of the assessments. What it is, is it basically tells you your core characteristics, right, and how you work with others. Why is this important? if you're looking for luxury clients? It's right from the beginning. Well, it identifies for them what your strengths are, right? So we're never gonna, listen, we're weak, I'm weak in social media. You're never gonna see, unless somebody does it for me, some amazing, beautiful content on Facebook and Instagram. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. <laughs> and I'm willing to take help, right? That's not my strength. Is it something I could work on a little bit or? maybe leverage to someone else for me, yeah, yeah. But the idea is that we work in our strengths. So now you have your resume up there, God bless you. And on Crystal, which is the website that does this for you and syncs into LinkedIn, it tells people who you are, but it also tells you who they are. Why does it matter who they are? Right, so let's say I, I score an appointment on a luxury expired listing or a referral, and don't you wanna know who your audience is? So what do you guys do? You go to Instagram, you go to Facebook, but you're not going where they're making their wealth and where they're managing their wealth and where they're talking about it all day, right? And if you wanted to join it, it's a couple bucks a month for you to be able to see these profiles and understand who your client is. I'm not going to talk to the CFO the same way I'm going to talk to the CEO or the CMO or the CDO. Those conversations are different, and the content that we put into these listing presentations and appointments has to be geared toward our audience. Yes? Do you agree? Can you imagine if you put a bunch of charts in front of me? I could barely use Instagram. Are you guys kidding me? Like, I'm like, what box do you need me to check? So certain individuals are more data-driven than others, right? And we wanna know who we're feeding to. What other strategies out there do you think that I've missed for lead gen? No one's gonna say commercials, billboards. Go ahead, Liv, what did I miss? What about like organizations or clubs involved in the fact that Does anybody belong, belong to um, a golf club or a country club? <laughs> Did everyone just look at Carl? Carl, tell us what it's like over there. No, um, it's, it, it's true, um, but with, their, with that is an expense, right? So when you look at your business budget, it is a great way to break into the industry. When you're looking for these clubs, you're looking for people like you. There are certain clubs um, in our area, where, down by where I live in Monmouth County, that are all young professionals looking to build a business and network, and other clubs that are not like that, right? So sometimes it's great to, to target one, and sometimes it's great to target another, depending on where you are in your business. But that's a, that's an, a monetary investment. So if you can't get in the country club, where else do those people go? Did you just call them alcoholics? <laughs> okay, bars, where else? Gyms, where else? Think about it. Fundraisers, grocery, Studio. studios, yoga. yoga studios, art galleries, sporting events. Auto clubs. Auto, there's an auto, there's auto clubs? Yes. Auto clubs? 
the dealer. Where else? I didn't even know that. Cigar lounges. Investment clubs. Why should everyone in this room be in an investment club? Well, because you guys are in the business of real estate, so you should be looking to invest for yourself. But when you're having conversations with these high net worth individuals, hi, uh, you want to be able to, you want to be able to talk to them about how money works and what a good investment is and what their wealth strategies are. And a lot of these guys own portfolios. So you might be calling someone or meeting someone that is not gonna sell their primary home, but they would be investing in their secondary home. Carl just broke the chain, he got coffee. Everybody wave to him. <laughs> That's it. The wheels are off the bus. Okay, we talked about prepping for the listing presentation. I wanna to talk to you guys about the luxury listing presentation. Okay. I want to talk to you about pre-sent packages or pre-listing packages. And I want to talk to you about um, market statistics and data. Okay. So what is in a luxury listing presentation? Did you guys see the ones that we provided for you? Maybe we can grab them and pass them around the room so you can take a look. Um, a lot of agents use uh, leather-bound, linen-bound books. Everything is printed and professional. Right, so it would be your listing presentation, but a higher quality. We have the capacity to do that for you guys in the offices. Um, I think it's really interesting for you to see. Everybody loves it, they wanna to touch it, they wanna to feel it, it's palpable, it's made, it, it has this like faux leather feel to it. Talk to me about what luxurious fabrics are. What are the luxurious fabrics? Leather, linen. Gareth, what are you thinking? Silk. Silk. Well, are you going to send a book in cashmere? Yes. Maybe. Yeah. That is baller. Yeah, why not? Let's see if we can get a market for that. Right. So everything that we're presenting to them has to look and feel luxurious. Right? What's inside the presentation? Mm-hmm. Marketing analysis, what else? Is it the same package for every single seller that you meet with? No. No. Right, so you're gonna bind it or put it together for their specific property. What do you think you wanna show in there? Let's go over what your value is. What's, what's the value here? Superior marketing, right? We're going to talk about the, uh, the luxury collection. What do you have to have? Like, you have to have photos. You have to have professional photography. And the guy sometimes that you're going to use for a $100,000 house is not the guy that you're going to use for a million-dollar house. Can we agree on that? Right? or depending on the quality of work that you always put out, it might be, right? They want drone, they want area, you want property history. You, you want them to know where you're gonna market the property. Now you're not gonna bring this book to them and you're not gonna read it to them. It's a gift. You're gonna talk to them and converse and hit all of these points and you're gonna leave it with them. Before you get there, we had a really, um, we, had, we had a great time breaking into a market in um, the Monmouth County area by sending a little pre-list gift in a box with a little luxurious bow with information about themselves. So we've spoken to you guys about these pre-list packets and what's in it, absolutely the video. We do a video card. You should be using that for these clients. Introducing yourself so they feel familiar and they get to know you. Some property photos. Information about the market. Because nobody likes to be unprepared when they sit down to talk to you about the value of their home. 
Do you think the conversation about pricing or negotiation is different with um, high net worth individuals or luxury homes? Yeah. Can I tell you guys the secret? It's way easier. Why do you think it's easier? Well, that's very true, which is why you're able to list, because um, people will pay for value um, at that price point. But wh wh why do you think it's easier to get a million dollar home sold and negotiated than it would be a 300,000? And I'm not saying all of them. We all have our crazy, we all have our crazy experiences more with competition. more competition. She said letting money go. I don't know about that. Yeah. Letting it go because it's going to come back. They have more of it. Right. Right. They're not strapped. They're not strapped. They're money wise, and they might be fiscally motivated and responsible, right? But if there's a gutter hanging off the house, it's not going to make or break the deal. Uh, one of the first, and I just told the story yesterday, so forgive me for anyone who, who has to hear it again. Um, one of the first luxury properties that I sold, it was like a million two. It was in Point Pleasant Beach. Are you guys familiar with that area down the shore, right on the water? And um, the seller was not my client and was not at the inspection, but the buyer was. And we were hanging out in the kitchen as the inspector did his stuff. Wasn't following him around. He was going to get the report and the data later. Having a nice conversation. And the inspector upstairs turned on like the tub not like the tub, turned on the Whirlpool tub in a million two house. <laughs> and all of a sudden we heard like whoosh. And in the downstairs um, fifth bedroom, it was like pouring out of the vents and the fire. It, it, was, it was just water, right? Now if that had happened in a 300 or 500 or even today in a $750,000 house, that would have been a disaster. We shut the water off. The buyer said, hmm. We'll fix it, no big deal. The mindset is different, right? If they want what they want, go ahead, Carl. One thing I want to add is, you know, property management companies with pretty high net worth people, those are pretty big investments. And the biggest thing that they want to charge over is some of these individuals is you're just saying you're going to do something, and do it. What I mean by that is if I'm going to be at your house by 5 o'clock, you're not sure. Yeah, and I think that it also speaks to integrity, right? And it speaks to integrity. If we say we're going to do something, then we, people should do it, right? The crazy thing about that, go ahead. Um, What's your name? Deborah Marshall. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Just to add to that, um, I find that mediators are harder to work with. Mm -hmm. Because they want you to cut to the chase. <laughs> and again, always come from a point of attribution when you're offering mm -hmm. information or something that they don't already know. A hundred percent. I think when they're negotiating, um, instead of negotiating by thousands or five thousand or ten thousand, they're no negotiating by fifty or hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Um, and yes, some of the personalities are extremely direct. And you should know your audience, which is why we give those resources. However, what do you think they had to do to get there? They had to work hard and they had to, it starts with a W. 
It's not wine and dine. <laughs> they had to win. So you're dealing with extremely competitive individuals who don't like to lose. So when we're focusing on their mindset, we want to make sure that they're always winning. Right? So to your point, yes, they can be very demanding in particular because they can afford to be. And I think that those barriers are often uh, broken down by building that personal relationship with them and giving them what they want. And like Carl said, showing up on time um, and really giving them a terrific experience and service. So that's all true. Okay. So let's just talk really quickly about your car. How many people don't drive a, a luxurious car? Okay. How many people, when they roll up to an expensive property, feel embarrassed that they don't drive an expensive car? How many people drive an expensive car and it's like more expensive than everything they pay for for the whole month? Yeah, okay, Claudia, thanks for being honest. I appreciate it. I love it. Okay. So they're not as concerned with what you're driving as what you're saying and how you can help them and whether or not you can get the job done. So they're going to want to look for proven statistics, right, which is why so many people assume, um, okay, well, if I'm going to sell luxury real estate, then I have to be in this brand. And what I want you guys to know is that we sell more luxury real estate all over the place than those other brands. And um, part of the suite that I'm going to share with you guys at the end of this is an opportunity to access that based on where you guys are located. So you're, you come in in that pre-listing appointment proven in the market as a luxury agent or a luxury company, which I think is also a barrier that we didn't discuss. Okay. Do you guys have anything else? They like charts. Go ahead. You'd be surprised what they drive, yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to run through this. Communication tactics. We want to be clear and consistent. Always clear and always consistent. We want to make sure we understand their needs and products. We want to study and follow their local market. Right, what's happening on the shore or up in Hudson County might not be what's happening um, down in Cape May, for instance. You want to focus on the experience and the investment. You want to be flexible and responsive. Why do I say that? Why do I say you have to be flexible? <laughs> the experience isn't about you. It's their experience. And we can guide them, but we have to work within their parameters while we set our expectations. Um, and why responsive? hundred percent. And it's something that I didn't put on the slide that I think is really important is that you guys have to be able to be solution based on your own. Um, it's very important that you are able to give them a solution without having to ask for it. Go ahead, Ash. Um, what's your thoughts on, like, being flexible, like, the limits to that, right? Like, if you have someone that constantly needs to adjust for that, do you just keep adjusting for them? Or like, what's your feedback on how flexible you can be? Well, my business probably doesn't look like your business. So is it your first luxury home or your 50th? Right? So I think it depends on what you want from your business. I mean, have I fired clients before? Yes. Is it harder to fire the really wealthy ones? Yeah. That stinks. Go ahead, Frank. I think maybe the question, I don't know if you speak to the rest of the question, maybe the question has to do more with like uh, not becoming too much of a, uh, I don't know what word to use, like a lap or right. not to be too beholden. Because you can get to a point where they lose respect. So the point was, what the show is saying is these, these, you know, these are people who typically are busy, they have, tough, they have tough schedules, they're running all over the place, they're active. So you want to be responsive to that and, and be flexible. So you don't want to be flexible to the point where you're just, uh, you're just leaving your own way in. You've got to maintain your own self-worth, your own self-respect, and they will respect it. 
I, I think something I just want to speak about that for is when we're responsive, we're not at an elevated rate of speech. We're calm, we're receptive, and we're taking action. Um, I'm talking a lot slower today than, um, than I usually do because the rate of speech changes depending on who you're with and who your audience is, and you have to mirror and match it. So it's very important that they know you're responsive, but you're not nervous, agitated, impulsive. They want a secure, replicable experience, and so do you for your clients. Go ahead, Liv. And he closed the gap. Yeah. Can we talk? Yeah. Thank you for sharing that because I think that as we're discussing today, and you know, this is why I think masterminding and, and getting with other agents is so important because the things that we discuss come up and now we're able to highlight them and really talk about them with you guys and they might not have been on the top of my mind. When you are applying for a job or a career or an opportunity, very often you have what? A resume, right? Which is like our list book. Um, and that's different than references. So I was always told it doesn't matter what it says on their re resume, it matters what their personality is, right? And what the references say. That's going to be like 75% of it. So back to Ashley's question, you know, sometimes you spend the time to really provide an excellent service and opportunity for people so that you can earn their reference. Not even a referral, just a reference. Um, so that's a great tactic also. All right. Um, and then you always want to keep it personalized. Uh, and what I mean by that is they get a phone call, a, a video, a gift, through different stages when you really get into this, and definitely at closing. And you want to prepare their expectations. The luxury market has softened right now. That's something that you guys need to know, right? Um, a lot of the loss for them is real loss. It's not paper loss like it is for people in three hundred dollars to $800,000 houses holding a mortgage. So, you know, be tactful and compassionate about it. Um, set the showing parameters. This is really big. I have agents that only show their own properties. I've seen it both ways. Nobody knows the property better than you. As a listing agent, all the lights are on. Um, but at the same point in time, the client is the same client whose house you're selling. So you, you want to give them the space to explore and have those conversations and not walk them through an hour and a half tour. There's nothing worse than an hour and a half tour in a luxury property that you and your client are not interested in on the receiving end from a buyer. Okay, we talked about professional photography, staging, 
Staging doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money and put furniture in places. It means that you, are, you might be moving furniture out of places. You might be eliminating and opening the space. You know, it, it wants to appear open and it wants to appear inviting and clean, even if it's dated or even if it's, you know, antique. I'm trying to look up, think of a nice word for some of those houses built in the 90s. Um, you definitely want to use drones. Matter ports are out there. People love floor plans, guys. Um, they're going to want to see a floor plan if they have it. If, if it was a, a custom build, they're going to want to see the architectural plans. Um, and then I want to just talk to you about tools and resources. So I'm going to swap out. And this is, unfortunately for you guys in the room, um, this is a, a, Remax, a Remax product. But I think it's really important that I highlight it for you. So when you guys, for those of you guys who want to get with me afterwards, um, who are not with Remax, and we can figure out a solution for you to access the same kind of material, please don't hesitate to come up. I think it's really important that we do that. Um, so when you log into your Remax Center, there's something called the collection. Yes? Do you, are you guys familiar with that? It's the Remax Collection brand. Now, I'm pretty sure that all of your, um, all, all the companies out there have some type of product um, but I have to say that this is by far the best product that I've seen across the brands for, um, for marketing uh, luxury properties. So when you go into the Remax collection, you're going to go underneath, uh, when you go into Remax.net, you're going to go into um, the Remax collection as tools and resources. And this isn't a tech class, but I need you guys to see this because after we leave here and we feel like we can conquer the world, we go out and we say, well, what does the marketing plan look like? And how much money do I need? And how do I have a conversation? Because we really didn't unpack that. Um, and if you're interested, we can get together and unpack it a little bit further. But this is a hack for every single person here. So you click the luxury listing planner and you click start now. And I'm going to just put this in because this is what I used as an example when we were running it. And you choose the country. So we're in the United States. And um, I'll choose the zip code just so you guys can see how it works. And it's furnished. So I'm going to click Next. And it's going to ask what the highlighted property details are. So is it waterfront? Is it acreage? It has great views. It has curb appeal. It's an elite neighborhood. OK, I'm going to hit Next. What is important to my client? So what individual is it? Am I dealing with an engineer, an attorney, a CFO, or a CPA? Well, they're going to manage their cost and risk. But guess what? In luxury, you're going to want to have that conversation with all of your clients. So I always click that. I, of course, I want to impress my sellers, right? We want them to think it's great. And why not boost my own brand while I do it? So then you hit Submit. OK. For those of you guys who think that there's budget barriers, this is really important. You get three choices. You have a lean property plan, you have um, like a budget friendly or moderate plan, and then you have a brand boost, which is the most expensive. For those of you breaking in, you're probably going to choose the lean plan. So I'm going to run through it with you so you can see what it looks like. And then I think you guys should go resource this out and practice it. This is what you would be bringing in the list book what, that you'd be binding. OK, so you view the plan. And underneath it, it talks about visuals, advertising, material, and tips for you, and then launching it. So they recommend pro photography. They recommend a property video. And they recommend drone and aerial. And underneath each one, they give you a caption about it for you to talk to your client about in depth. It tells you where you should be advertising or sharing the property. And then it gives you the tools that the company offers to do that so you can discuss it at a high level. Same thing with the material. What do we need? Go ahead. Okay, so um, I do have a free listing book coming my way. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to use a current date. So I'm thinking, because I don't only have all the information in there, couldn't I, as a voice, just like copy and paste certain parts and add that to my listing? Like, of course, yeah. I think that this would wow anybody. <laughs> Um, but what it does is it really helps you navigate what you need to do and present so that you're speaking the language that other people in the industry are speaking to them if you don't know already. 
And even after you know, it's a really easy way to do this. Um, it talks about the materials. It talks about tips for you. What you can highlight in drone, why you highlight it. This is your conversation key piece for your clients. You don't need to tell them that, you know, there's a click down here. You need to highlight these marketing um, items in your presentation, and these are your talking points. I think it's phenomenal. Has anyone ever seen this before? No. Okay, I love it. I was like, man, if I had had this before, are you kidding me? Um, how to make the sellers happy, and it talks to you about how you converse with them, what kind of activities. I, I think this is terrific. And yes, the plan is different, and you can even click make a, make a presentation and it prints the entire thing for you. Yeah, does that sound good? Okay, did we level the playing field? Yeah, okay. So um, I wanted to do, I think I'm 10 minutes over. What time is it? 11.13, I'm 13 minutes over. Okay, well, we started a little bit late. I want to, um, actually, let me just show you one more thing. Sorry guys, I just wanna make sure that I respect your time. It's really important to me that I do that. Okay. Yeah. True. Okay, really quick. Underneath these tools and resources is a complete marketing playbook for you guys. Um, it has Instagram posts, so that uh, Facebook posts, videos, everything that you can possibly use to leverage the brand um, so that they are familiar with it. And I think you guys should be familiar with it. We should be, you should be pushing that content out anyway because over the last couple of years, obviously, inventory um, has decreased and prices have increased in some areas up to 40% and homes that were never luxury before may or may not be considered luxury now. Um, they have international advertising pages for you guys and a whole bunch of stuff that is at your fingertips. All right, I wanna just see how you're doing. Are you guys good? Do you wanna do a couple more minutes of question and answer? Okay, let's do it. So, go ahead, Ash. Um, so, I have two questions, but the first one's not really an answer right now. Okay. I just want to know if you can extend this and uh, break down all of the things that you highlighted today into a longer luxury thing. Um, and then my second ask the question is, for advertising, is there a range that it's reasonable to spend? Because it sounds like you could go ham. <laughs> So it's, it's funny because um, it, it can get extremely expensive in competitive areas. Um, you know, we used to run a ferry ad for like $4,500 a month. Um, and for any property that we had, uh, it, I think that you have to really identify what the market is. So because right now we're really blessed with home prices and values, you know, those $800,000 homes don't require that type of investment. But when you're, when you're really putting together um, a portfolio or a marketing plan for high valued homes like that, it, it does get expensive. Printed brochures, um, it, your own separate property websites. Um, you're gonna want a showing assistant sometimes because if you're doing business, you can't be at every showing. You know, you're going to want to make sure that you're communicating how the clients want you to communicate. So that sometimes is an expense because I love to text message, but the truth is people either like conversations or personal contact. Um, it, it's really going to, it really can become very expensive, but it doesn't have to be, right? Like we can break into that market from 800 to 1, 2 right now in the majority of areas and not spend that type of money. 
And that's the challenge with luxury. That's why we don't do it. Because people think, oh my God, I have to spend so much money. Right? Now, is there a difference between a tour on a 6,000 square foot home and a 12,000 square foot home? Yes. Yes, there is, unfortunately. <laughs> it takes, yeah. You want to do it in class. Okay. Carl, can we do luxury in class? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what if we did um, a luxury like group? <laughs> Kareem should pay for it. <laughs> he should pay for it. What are you talking about? Um, okay. All right. So I, I, I want. I'm thinking about the best way to do it um, because we all come from so many different geographic locations. Um, but yes, Ash, we'll put something together for at least end of the year and then beginning of first quarter to focus for you guys on luxury. Um, the cool thing about it right now is that they know they're losing money, so there's a huge opportunity for you to have a conversation with those clients. Shakita, you're like shaking your head. Tell us, what would your recommendation be? You've sold, ton yeah, you've so sold tons of luxury. What do you think? You know, just like what you said. Kareem. Mm -hmm. We're all willing to help each other. So, you know, if you're just new in the business, one year, two year, you can always promote your office experience. You know, you have tons of tools and resources. If you have a question about something, you can easily text, pick up the phone, make a phone call. And that's so important in order to grow your business. And make sure you keep, you know, build your database. You know? Yeah. that you're an agent. I love that. Can you give her a round of applause? That was awesome. Yes. What's your name? Uh, Les. Les. Hi, Les. Thanks. Timing. The middle market where time of market, if it's, you know, in this market, if it's 30 days on market, something's wrong with the property, right? Whereas for a luxury home, that might be the norm. Can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it depends on the market. Um, I've heard that luxury homes take a lot longer to sell. Can I share a secret with you guys? <laughs> if it's priced correctly, it sells. Um, now, a lot of the custom homes, when you get really high up into the price, price performance areas, yes, they're going to, you know, you're looking for a global buyer or you're looking to market a specific um, area or individual. They can. So traditionally, um, when I work with some luxury agents, uh, we would list for a year. Um, the property would come off the market the week before Thanksgiving and go back on the market, usually in the middle of first quarter. So um, if it didn't sell, that's how we uh, manage the inventory. Um, I like things that move, and the longer the relationship goes, the more opportunity it is for it to get messed up and for you to not, you know, meet their expectations. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, you guys are going to get everything. I'm going to just close this out. Um, you're going to get everything. I, uh, I'm going to share everything with you. We'll put together a group. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah. Nobody in the house is looking for 7,000 square feet. 
So I think uh, you guys go back to your database, look at between age 50 and 65, where your network, network is might be their thinking to sell their house and go more luxury house. I think that's interesting because the, I do have a, ca um, like a chart about like who has the most net worth and what, um, where the opportunity is for you to find luxury clients based on age demographic. So um, we'll share that out also. So thank you for sharing that. Um, people don't, I think the trend has changed, um, like I mentioned in the beginning, post COVID. Uh, anybody else, any other questions? Go ahead, Lev. What are your thoughts on breaking into a high net worth town? Let's say a Rumson or uh, a watch up by working rental. Because don't those people wind up flipping to buyers at some point? Yeah, so fu something really f funny I just read yesterday about the market in um, the Hamptons. So you had all of these uh, agents selling all these properties in the Hamptons to everyone from Manhattan who wanted to get away with the assumption that you would be able to rent the property for like 35000 or sometimes $100,000 a week. And now that COVID ended, a lot of those properties went unrented this summer because people went back to international travel. Really interesting. <laughs> Um, so I, I have worked hands in hand with luxury agents who started their business in the seasonal rental market. I think, um, I don't know about the rental market throughout New Jersey, but where we are, it's very competitive. It's, it's nearly impossible to even find a rental right now um, in those areas. So to go back to the second part of the question, well, one, yes, rentals are always a way to break in. Um, and then two, if I were looking to break into Rumson and I didn't live in Rumson, do you want me to tell you what I would do? <laughs> well, I definitely would call everybody. And, and he lives in Navisink, and actually in the Middletown area, um, in a beautiful house on Navisink River Road <laughs> with a helicopter. Um, yeah, I, I didn't stalk it or anything. No. Um, right across from another house on a hill with a vineyard that I'm just like, how does it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, it's such a different... Uh, lifestyle. But so I would immerse myself in, in the area. So I, you know, this sounds silly. If you have children and they're in sports, there's no reason why they can't register for sports in that town. If you go to church in your town, there's no reason why you can't go to church in that town. <laughs> if you're helping charities um, in your town because you think they need it, well, guess where those charities are helping people? Not in Rumson. Right? So you can go join those organizations and network with those individuals. If you can afford it, you join the local country club there. Right? You get involved with different groups. And you, you um, immerse yourself in the community. You make friends with the other luxury agents. Because here's the crazy thing. Those luxury agents, like, they all talk to each other. And they're like, I have this coming on, and you have this coming on, and I can move this person here. And it's a very small group of trusted professionals in those markets that are familiar with each other. And you want to break into that group. So maybe you go visit those people's properties and you learn about every single home that comes on the market in that area so that when you are speaking to clients, you can say, oh, I was in that house. Oh, I saw that property. Oh, are you talking about the one with the carriage house in the back? And we begin to know what they know because they know if we don't know it. Yeah. Worst thing that can happen to everybody in this room right now is you get a lead on luxury listing agents. Because you're going to say, oh my God, what do I do? So my suggestion, and it happened to me, I was out there trying to get leads, trying to get leads, mixing in the community. All of a sudden, someone says, I'd like you to come talk to you about my house. Can you come tomorrow afternoon? And I was like, ah, you know, tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. So maybe a way to get started is to engage in creating your listing presentation for the luxury market. But if you think it's a way, yeah, absolutely. You guys should be looking at that. Right. A hundred percent. Uh, thank you, Frank. Um, all right, so one other thing that I do want to just share is um, 
local town boards and politics, right? If you choose the right candidate and he's gonna be the mayor of Remsen and you support him, you're going to build relationships through his network. You guys have to start thinking about placing yourself in the eye of high net worth individuals. Um, so we're gonna go more in depth on this. I like appreciate the enthusiasm and I'm sweating up here and I'm so nervous today. Um, sidebar to present to all of you guys um, because as uncomfortable as luxury makes you, um, right, it makes everyone if you're not in that, if you don't live in that area, you don't live that lifestyle on a daily basis. So I appreciate you guys for being open and transparent and vulnerable with me today. I'm open to all of your questions. You can find my information on the center underneath the rosters. Um, text me, call me, email me. I'm always making time to help you guys out in your business. Thank you, Thank you for joining us today. Yeah.